To avoid fainting, keep repeating. It's only a movie. 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 I think the interesting thing was, to me, I was blissfully unaware of any anybody ever having any right to say anything about what we were doing in the room. You know, basically it was Sean and I had been making this film almost a year by that time, and suddenly I'm saying there's these people, they, they want to make changes, and I said, well, fuck them, you know, it's like, no, no, they have a legal right to make us do things. It's like, what? You know, <laughs> it was just, is it at, at the times, you know, we're all growing our hair long, and saying screw you to the government and everything else, and suddenly there's some phantom group off there that's in Hollywood? No, we were New Yorkers. Come here. Piss your pants. <laughs> ah, piss your pants. <laughs> I said piss your pants. You sick mother. <laughs> The scene where the girl um, was forced to urinate is remarkable in that, in that it's such a low-tech, quiet, personal scene that's so disturbing without any particular special effects. Um, uh, it's just that, that it, it, it gave her a reality and a credibility to what was about to happen, uh, something that, that made you afraid to continue watching, but afraid to take your eyes off the screen. There were no uh, uh, special effects in that scene. Uh, to be delicate, I will say that unlike the bag with the Cairo syrup in red dye number two, there was no bag with a urine-like substance. This was the real McCoy. Piss your pants. Look at that! God! God! Many, many uh, cuts of the film uh, were made by local theater owners, and they would get the movie, look at it, and and hate it, and chop out stuff. And we were uh, different times, uh, a few years after the film was released, we were trying to find just a regular cut of the movie, and we could never find one. It was always had stuff chopped out of it in different places. And, and didn't you, wasn't there a special editing room set up someplace that just tried to go through all the film cans with all these pieces of film in it and splice together one more intact version of the film <laughs> because everything came back always cut up by irate projectionists or religious mm, groups or whatever? Yeah. The first cut of the movie included all the special effects that we had created and a lot of blood, I think a lot more blood than what's in the final version. And I remember one version of the scene where Krug carves his name in his chest that I thought was extremely powerful visually. And it's not the same version that's in, in the film. Um, and I recall it as being extraordinarily strong and better than what's in the film, but that may not be true at all. Maybe just because I saw it for the first time. My feeling was, as an academic, you know, and I did approach it in some ways academically, was that until you sort of disembowel a human and sort of see the messiness of the inside, you haven't come to the essence of the matter, which is the complete mortality and the kind of unglamorousness of our bodies exempt from our minds and spirits, you know? And so I felt it was important to go to that level. I was on the, going to the set one day, and there was this new guy there. Uh, and he was apparently a special effects artist. And he, uh, we were doing the disemboweling scene where they, the guys, uh, I don't remember exactly the scene or anything, but I know that they were pulling the intestines out of one of the girls. I believe it was the, uh, the girl played by Lucy. And this guy had uh, uh, prophylactic rubber um, and he'd fill them full of I think he used peanut butter and jelly and some I mean all this weird stuff that he'd mix up and then he tied them up and he'd he he'd made this thing 
and it really looked like intestines to me. It really grossed me out. That guy was kind of weird too, but you know, the special effects guys, they're all weird. When we cut for lunch, I remember that nobody said anything and that uh, for the first time all the joking was over and we felt, well, I can't speak for other people, but I just sort of felt like, uh, okay, we got to that place and it's, it's good we got to that place, but that's a horrible place, you know? And that's always been something that I've juggled the rest of my career. Places I went, we went, and Last House, I haven't gone again and don't really have a desire to go again. But somehow, for, for some reason at that time, I felt like it was necessary just to get to the guts of the matter. And uh, uh, we had done it. You know, you could feel it on the set. And um, it was kind of a somberness there. You know, you really felt the death of the character. And you felt not just the death of the victim, but you felt kind of the death of the of the killers you know you felt like they had lost whatever shred of innocence they had there's a, there's several moments in the film afterwards where they they change clothes they wash they put on suits and ties and they just you could feel them desperately trying to forget that they had done what they had done i can make love to a looker like you with my hands tied behind my back <laughs> Again, I wanted to get some kind of realism in there, and, and the realism would be her shaking her head, and if she didn't have something in her mouth, uh, it, it wouldn't have worked. You would have seen it. So what I did was I put my belt underneath my clothes and, and tied it in there. So when she opened my fly, she takes my belt out and puts it in there. Now she has something of substance to, to yank on and to pull. And then when she spits it in the water, boy, people cringed. <laughs> I know guys did. <laughs> that, that I thought was, was good. That, that worked nice. One of the reasons why this film is so powerful is that n I can't define exactly what it was, and I still can't look at it. It's not a film I go back to, oh, I think I'll take Saturday afternoon and just watch that old film again. It's like it is still an assault of film. It is still a film that just is completely uncompromising and does not make you comfortable. Um, and uh, beyond that, I can't define it. All I know is that I did not have any restrictions on what I shot, except that what I wanted to impose, and I wanted to deal with something very, very um, nasty. You know, it was dealing with anti-personal violence and just how ugly it could be. And um, you know, you end up with films that's, that's in many ways ugly. You know, and. Uh, it's unjustified except that it, those things exist and um, you know, art is about things that exist. It's all real. All real.